What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Clinton and I hope you all enjoyed that little edit that I did. I've been trying to get a little better with uh, kind of making some um, video edits and montages so you guys can kind of see behind the scenes what we're doing and I can kind of fill you in on all of the stuff that I've already done. So today we're gonna talk about, this is a part one of a two series. Uh, this is installing the front axle onto a 1996 Jeep Cherokee XJ. I am currently, uh, I installed the Barnes four wheel drive truss kit. I am working with this company. This company has been amazing. They have been so awesome to work with. Uh, I've called them multiple times to make sure everything's correct. They're super knowledgeable and they can make brackets for just about anything. So I'll put a link in the description. Please go check them out. Uh, anyways, let's get to the good stuff. So. To get this axle prepped, what I did was uh, you essentially take all of the brackets off the tube except for the upper control arm uh, mounts. You leave those because this bracket actually uses those to guide it so that way you know it's going to be exactly how you want it. So everything gets cut off, the tube gets cleaned, uh, sanded down and so forth, uh, and then you tack together uh, these brackets that they come with. They're tabbed so these brackets only go together uh, a specific way you can't really mess it up um, that's the one nice thing about this uh, this is one reason why I wanted to go with this company uh, you can only do it one way so I didn't get any edits of me uh, putting that together so you essentially tack together all of the pieces and then it's one bracket and then you set it on you tack it in exactly on both sides where you want it make I used an angle finder to make sure that this pad was exactly the same as this pad because there's really not much play, but you wanna make sure it's exact. I mean, as exact as possible. So I made sure both sides were exact, and then I tacked both sides in. Um, and then what you do is you're gonna start with doing, it's called stitch welding. So we used a MIG welder on this, a gas MIG welder. And uh, what I did is, well actually, my friend Sam from Hills Off Road Gear helped me a bunch. I couldn't have done this without him. We actually, stitch weld uh, one inch stitch and then you want to move over to an area away from that and do another one inch stitch weld and then we went over here and did a one inch stitch weld so essentially you're getting the rhythm what you're doing is you don't want to put too much heat on one area of the bracket or of the axle because it'll start to warp it so what you want to do is start is stitch weld from back and forth back and forth to get it uh, evenly heated and then also evenly um, cooled as well so we went, we went back and forth, back and forth, got everything stitch welded up, and then I went back and touched up all the welds, uh, and then I put some primer on it to get it, you know, so it wouldn't, you know, oxidize. And also I wanted to see if there was anything that I needed to touch up, and there is quite a bit of area that I need to touch up. But, I mean, the biggest, it's really, like, one of the easiest processes I've, I've done on the Jeep. I honestly... Grinding all of the old brackets off was harder than installing all of the new brackets, which seems crazy, but it literally took more time to take all the brackets off than it was to put it on. So, Also, another thing uh, that you want to have when you're doing these kits, um, it doesn't have to be this brand. It's called uh, essentially weldable primer uh, or weld through primer. So I use 3M on this. And essentially, the big what you want to do with this is you want to coat the underneath of this truss kit the brackets before you weld it on with this so that way you have primer in there so it doesn't rust out especially where I live in North Carolina I didn't want this to be an issue um, with uh, you know rust in, in the future so you want to spray a coat of that and then you can actually weld with this so it doesn't affect it doesn't come off or anything like that when you weld it all right so the only thing that we did I didn't get to well me and Sam didn't get to today was the lower control arm brackets uh, I, I couldn't really get it angled enough with these jacks uh, so we just weren't able to weld them in today but I'll probably um, weld those in tomorrow or the next day I probably won't put that in the clip but those are supposed to they have a tab as well so they just mount right underneath here weld them in and then that's it that's everything so like this is literally going to be bolt-in ready into the XJ so now that this is done the next step is I have steering coming in we have steering components um, we have tie rod drag link and then uh, we'll de depends on the track bar. I don't know if I'm going to be able to reuse mine with this bracketry or not. We'll see. And then control arms, and then this thing's in. Uh, at that point, we will have both axles installed into the Jeep. I'm hoping this week I'll have both of them in the Jeep, sitting on the new axles, and then I'll just be buttoning up things like brake lines. And then I'm hoping to drive this thing this week and get some better photos 
out of my driveway than me taking all my pictures in the driveway because I feel like all my pictures are of the same thing sitting in my driveway. So, sorry. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you all have any questions with the, the install on this, leave it in the comments. I'd love to help you. I've learned a lot doing this process. Uh, like always, please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. See ya.